Well, hello everyone and welcome to Color with Donna in Coloritaville in today's video, which is a, a color and chat. And I'm going to be working in the Mystical Lands of Uchana, book two, Journey to the Hidden Places, Karen E. Myers. This is, of course, for hashtag Mystical 2021 from here on the channel. And I'm going to be working on Lapis Highlands Bed and Breakfast which is this picture here, and we will see how far we get. Um, I have my um, Artex Skin Tones, my Graphic Bees, my Cali Arts here with me at my desk, um, a little piece of paper where I can kind of try out colors because I don't have my swatches. So, yeah. So that's where I am with that. And I haven't put a lot of thought into the page as of yet. So we're just going to kind of jump in and we will see where it takes us. But I thought this was a cute little image. Um, it's got some very delicate lines drawn in. Also, you've got some brickwork things like that. So yeah, let's just see what happens. Um, I'm starting out with my graphic B and it's the honey, which is 1250 um, as the number. And I'm just going to kind of work on some of the line work and things like that, just to kind of darken up the edges. And then I'll come in with a lighter yellow and we'll see how it does. So how is everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing well. Um, for me, today is Saturday, the 6th of March. So um, I think this will probably go up on either Sunday or Monday. So that's when you guys are probably seeing it. So how has your weekend been so far? Or how was your weekend if this is Monday? It was a pretty long week for me. Um, it was a little bit of a stressful week, but I made it through. I got a cute surprise in the mail the other day. Miss Monet sent me a cute little um, St. Patrick's Day card, and that was so nice. Thank you so much, Monet. It was very much appreciated. Um, Monet has a channel here on YouTube also. So be sure to check her out. That's the Coloring Diva. I enjoy her channel when I go over and watch. And I'm sure you guys would also. So be sure to check that out seeing which yellow, which second yellow I want to use. Maybe this one. Yeah, that looks good. So I got a big decision to make in the next couple hours. Um, you guys hear me talking about my Riley. He's my Chewini. And, um, Someone a couple towns over had put on Facebook that um, a dog had wandered up and it had like a, a rope around its neck and it's a pretty sad story. And they've been looking for the owner for about a week now and haven't found it. Um, it doesn't seem like anybody's really looking for the dog and I'm sorry if you're keeping a dog chained up with a rope. You probably don't care. You're probably glad he's gone or something. I don't know. But um, he looks just like Riley. He's got to be a little Chewini. He definitely doesn't need to be outside in the weather and things like that. And um, 
they're kind of looking for somebody that might be willing to rehome him. And I'm thinking about it, guys. I am. I'm thinking about it. So she told me I could come down and take a look at him like after five o'clock today. Um, so, yeah. I'm trying to decide if that's what I want to do. I keep thinking, you know, I do have the two dogs already. And I know it'll be a lot, especially if we move into the RV, which is hopefully what we're going to be doing in the next few months. Um, we still haven't gotten a chance to go look at that yet. Oh, it's been, like I said, it's been pretty crazy. But, um, yeah, so I've got some thinking to do and some decisions to make today. You know, I definitely want to do what's right for us. I also want to do what's right for the poor little puppy because and those of you who know me know that I am a sucker for the puppies. So, we'll see. We will see. I love the, Ch I love Chewinis though, you know, um, I never thought I would because I've never been much of a Chihuahua person. I've always kind of not liked Chihuahuas, but Riley is a Chewini and he has totally changed my mind. He has at least enough dachshund in him that he doesn't remind me of a Chihuahua. And I know there's no promises that this dog would be the same. So I'm a little, I'm a little apprehensive about the whole idea, but I feel really sorry for the dog. It sounds like he's had a rough go in life. And any of you that know me know that I treat my babies like, well, babies. Um, so he would definitely have a, a good loving place to be. So, I don't know. I just, you know, you never know what kind of habits. Um, he looks really young. Uh, he truly looks like Riley's twin. I sent a picture of him to Deb, Deb Lore, this morning. And she's like, oh my, Riley number two. And I'm like, yeah, no kidding. And of course, she's like, enable, enable. Go get him, go get him. Enable, enable. So, I don't know. And of course, I've already named the dog. If I go get him, you know, I already know. It'll, it's either going to be Ricky or it's going to be Desi. Because that was the one thing I always kind of wished was that I would have gotten Lucy first. <laughs> I already had Riley and had him named by the time we got Lucy. And I just think it would be really cool to have a Desi with a Lucy or a Ricky with a Lucy. Um, I think that would be really neat. So... If I do go get him, at least he already has a name. He's a cute little thing. Of course he's cute. He looks like my Riley. So, he's just precious. So, I don't know. I got some thinking to do today. Some decisions to make. So, we'll see. I will let you guys know what I decide to do with that, you know, you guys know I'm a little bit crazy, and I do things that are probably not always in my own personal best interest, but I'll tell you what, though, the other day, Gary come home and tried to convince me that I wanted this mini pig, um, a girl that he works with had two, and she was trying to rehome them, and Thank God I did a little bit of research because he's like, oh, they're small and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay. So I get to doing a little bit of research and I start to find out that these dogs are these dogs, these pigs, these men, mini pigs or whatever. They have a tendency to get, well, big. So like really, really big. So I'm really glad I did my research before. I went off and did something like that. Okay, let me see. Kind 
trying to find a good green for this grass. I have got to sit down and re-swatch my markers, the ones that I've lost swatches for. All right, this is Pettis, how do you say that? Pettis Poise G825. Come in here and do this grass right here underneath this flower. I was thinking about live streaming with you guys later this evening. But if I go look at this pup, probably not going to be able to. It seems like it's been like forever since, well, it has been a few months since I streamed. And I really miss streaming with you guys. So it's a lot different than... Um, just doing the color and chats, you know? Okay. I can dig that. And I'll come over here and I'll do like the same to this little grass over here on the other side. This has got some really fine work in it. So that's why I pulled my graphic bees back out because I knew I was going to need those ultra fine ends. I'm seriously thinking about ordering another set of like Sharpies or Bix because I'm finding myself with, I've got some coloring books right now that I know I'm going to need those really, really fine points on. So I'm thinking about doing that. Just, well, I mean, I've got 96 colors, I think, in the graphic bees, but they're kind of expensive markers, and I don't want to just use them all up, you know? I don't know. I guess if you're going to have something, you should use it. But Okay, that's cute. I may go in with another color on this because I'm not sure I'm digging that. We'll see. It's kind of bright. Of course, there's nothing wrong with bright, right? Okay. Like right up in here. It's got some more of that like bushy green grass there. And I'm really excited because in April. It looks like I will be co-hosting with um, someone for a month color along type thing. So I'm excited about that. I don't think she has announced anything yet, so I won't say anything more than that. Um... But I am really excited. I'm thinking April is going to be a fun month here on ColorTube. There. Oh, that was kind of tedious to try to do those little areas with such a large brush. Okay, let me see. Let me think here. Okay, um, how do I want to do these bricks? I think I'll use the, maybe the Keiko one here on the bricks. And I'm not sure what I'll use. Well, I thought that was more of a reddish. And it's really not. It's more of a brown. That's not good. I may still use that though, but let me let me see what I've got. Some darker colors here. I 
Oh, actually, no, I think I'll use the burgundy. It's got more of a red look to it to do these bricks. And that one will just be a little off colored. Yeah, I kind of like red bricks. So. So it looks like either tomorrow evening or maybe Monday is when we'll finally get to go look at the camper. I'm really anxious to see what that looks like and everything. Um, I've got these cute little plans in my head on how I want to like decorate it. Because most, most of what I already have will probably end up having to go into storage. But I think at least maybe the front part. I don't know. I've been thinking about doing like a just like a happy camper type decor. Kind of like camping every day kind of thing, you know. But make it up. You know, you've seen the, the little decor that has like the happy camper type things and the um, you know, bright little splashes of color and things like that. That's kind of what I'm thinking I'll do if I get in there. Because we'll be in there for a little bit, you know, probably about a year that we'll have to live in there. And so I was kind of thinking about doing that. I don't really know. I'm kind of afraid if I decorate it up with all this little happy camper stuff that I'll get sick of the idea of camping. But what I was kind of thinking, though, is whatever, you know, however I do the decor in it, when we do get our house built, this will be, this will probably turn into our camping, you know, trailer, our camper. And if it does, it would already kind of be decorated for that. I don't know. But then Gary's not really keen on a 33 foot to like haul around to camp in because it takes such a big truck to move that kind of stuff so I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know I'll put some more thought into it but I've always kind of liked that and you can look on Pinterest you know that kind of decor and you can always look on Pinterest and get all kinds of really cool ideas for camper decor and, um, yeah, so I thought it would be kind of cool. Something that would be kind of fun. And, of course, I'm going to have to get very creative with the space because it's going to be kind of tight in there, but I do have that building that we've been using for storage. And as long as we can get like water and things into there and I can use that as a laundry area <clears throat> and maybe a like art area, um, then that'll be nice. And then that'll also be where we um, are storing all the things that won't, fit in the camper so and I'm trying to plan it up in my mind to make it sound wonderful because I know it's going to be stressful but I don't think it's going to be any more stressful than you know the situation and everything that we've found ourselves in so as a matter of fact other than having less you know and I don't even want to say less room because when you take into account the size of the camper and then you take into account the area the space that I've been currently living in it's not that much difference um, it might even be a little bigger truly so we'll see
we've had some pretty nice weather mixed in with rain and some cold but we've gotten to fill spring a little bit in the past couple weeks and i think it's absolutely wonderful absolutely wonderful um gary doesn't like it at all he's not happy <laughs> springtime brings really bad allergies to him. And I'm going to be honest, my allergies have been off the charts the past couple years too. But I'm telling you, I love feeling the warmth of the sun and everything. I'm just not, I'm not much of a winter person. Once, you know, I like it to be kind of chilly and cold and stuff over like the Christmas holiday. But then kind of like once Christmas is over, I'm good. I'm good. We can like automatically skip to summer at that point and well, spring and I'm a happy camper. So spring and probably fall are my two most favorite seasons. Um, I don't mind summer that bad either though. Except when it gets super duper 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 hot. You know, the hot where you're pretty much sweating as soon as you walk outside. You don't even have to do anything. That I don't too much care for. But now it's just the humidity, you know, because we get such bad humidity here. We still have our rooster, our neighborhood rooster. He's out there cock-a-doodle-dooing. I wish he would cock-a-doodle-don't, but, you know. Okay, I think that brick looks good. That's definitely kind of what I had in mind. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, now let me think. I've got to do, like, the, the mortar part, or whatever you call it, mor mortar, between the bricks. Let me try maybe this. There. I think that'll do. Got a little out of the lines, but it's okay. I can spruce it up and make it get rid of that. Use a little bit of maybe white. over it my white jelly roll that can get, kind of get rid of that okay looks good All right. So what are you guys coloring? What are y'all working on? Let me know. Um, all right. I'm looking for... Uh, I guess we can use pink roses. And don't forget, guys, to send me your finished pictures um, throughout the month if you would like them included in the end of the month video to share with the other subscribers to let them know what you've been working on this month. Um, just make sure you get those emailed to me. Probably, I would say by the 26th or so, 
So you can email them to me up until 26, 27, maybe even the 28th. Um, I haven't been doing my month in videos as early as I used to do them. So that should still be fine. And I've gotten some from Melissa already. So thank you, darling, for sending me um, the pictures you started working on in March. I will definitely include that or include them in my month in videos. And thank you also to Darcy. She's been sending me some emails keeping me up to date on new books that she finds that she thinks I may be interested in. I've been loving, 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 loving seeing those books. And Darcy, you were correct. I do not have that Unicorn Fiesta book. I'm going to have to get it. So you were right. I could have swore I had that book, but she was like, I don't think so. And she was right. I don't. So I'm going to have to get that one. I did color some yesterday in my I Love Cute Unicorns book. That was super fun. It really was. I enjoyed coloring in that. Um, that's one that I had gotten uh, a few months back from the I Heart books or the I Heart series, you know. So, and someone the other day had asked me about these markers. And if you're watching, I think I responded, but I actually got these off of Marker Universe. They're not cheap, but I got a really good sale on them. And I love the fact that it has that kind of a really small tip. And, um, yes, yeah, so that's where I got those. And I got a tower with it that, you know, is a desk tower. So the, those are the markers I keep like right there on my desk so I can just reach for them like anytime. And they work really good. So to have close by on the desk. Let's do this ivy here in these boxes. I know I keep forgetting to tell you guys what colors I'm using, but I'm using different sets here. So, but this one is Tuscany and I love the color names in the graphic bees. So what I'll do in the description is I will link to the Cali Art markers that I'm using. Um, I'll also link to these graphic bees um, over on like Marker Universe, the ones that I bought, if they still have them, I'll link to that. And of course, I will also leave a link to this wonderful book by Karen E. Myers down in the description. So you guys can just check over there and get a quick link that you can click if you're interested in any of that. And also, as always, um, all links related to Color Donna or Coloritaville is also in the description of the videos. My email address is always in the description of the videos. Um, my wish list is there. There's a link to the PayPal me if you would like to um, monetarily support the channel. And there's also a, a link to... Um, my Amazon affiliate link. And if you shop at Amazon and would like to support the channel, all you have to do is click on that link anytime you shop Amazon and I will get credit for your purchases. So, and I definitely appreciate all the support that I get from you guys. You guys are just wonderful about supporting me and supporting the channel. And I appreciate it so much. This is grass greens. Let me do this 
little grassy area down here. And it doesn't cost you anything at all to support the channel through Amazon. All you have to do is just bookmark the link. And anytime you shop at Amazon, just go through that link to get there. And I will get credit for your purchases. Um, and what they do is they just send me a couple pennies um, for purchases that are made. But it does, it adds up and it helps support the channel. And it helps me be able to buy more books and more supplies and things like that to share with you guys here on the channel. I've been struggling with these color and chats lately. I know. I feel like I, can't, I don't ever know what to talk about anymore. I'm sorry, but it's kind of just, it just goes to show you how boring my life is, you know. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I haven't left the house in a few days at all. So, just gets difficult sometimes. I've been struggling with my depression and stuff again lately, so. But I'm hoping as the spring starts to get near, get closer, um, and the weather starts to warm up and get nicer, that some of that can kind of go away. Um. Just being in a place that's not my own has been very, very hard um, on me. Physically, emotionally, mentally. And so, I don't know. I, I don't know that I'll be in my own place before the weather turns like cold again. But um, hopefully I'll be able to start working towards that and doing some things. I need to start getting over there and getting that storage building in order, um, making it livable pretty much, you know, cause we'll be using it for something more than just storage. I need to get in there and do some cleaning out and some painting and some freshening and, you know, things like that, just to make it a place that you would want to hang out in, you know? So yeah. I need to start working on that. Okay. What color did I use? I'm not sure this is it, but. Oh, I could have looked, couldn't I? Oh, it is. It's the Pettis Poise, or however you say that. Get this grass growing around here to be a little darker so it doesn't. it really wasn't supposed to go that far up into there. So I realized when I got there, I was like, oh, that was supposed to stop like, oh, I don't know, right there. Okay. I'll try to fix it. All right. Now... Maybe I could use that dark. It is really dark, though. But I could kind of apparently these people live in Georgia. Get that dark, dark dirt. We have like clay and it's red. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of like red Georgia clay, but it is a thing. Uh, 
Okay. It's there. <laughs> That's how I fixed that. Now, let's see. Um, I'm guessing these are some kind of like, they're stones is how I picture it. So let's go in and use like a stone color of gray down here on the stones. I'm not sure what the weather's supposed to be like today. Didn't feel really cold this morning, so hopefully we'll at least get back up into the 60s again today because I've been enjoying that, but I think I did see that the weekend was going to be a little cooler, so it may be into like the 50s, but it's okay. Right, and of course, these are stones around here, but we'll have to figure out a different color for those. Go in and put this just a little bit to give hopefully some depth, at least an appearance of some depth. I am not good at shadowing and all that kind of stuff. So I just do whatever I can just to kind of try to bring a little more depth or dimension at least the appearance of into some things. I have been using my pencils more like I promised you guys I would, so that's been nice. Okay, let's see. Looking. Look All right, I think I'm going to do the stones next. And I'm using, it's just a gray. It's a new natural gray. Natural gray four. Let me pull my drink over here. Oh, my throat's getting scratchy. That's what happens when you got these allergies. I think I'm going to start playing the Would You Rather game in my next color and chat. I would do it now, but it's on the other side of the room, but I think maybe that'll give me some things to talk about. Um, so you guys kind of tell me what's been on your mind. Um, I used to like to come on and talk about, you know, do some chats and kind of talk about state of the world and my opinions on that but things have gotten a little dicey and it's hard for anybody to like talk about things like that these days without um you know the powers that be deciding that they don't agree and therefore you shouldn't have that opinion i guess so I've been a little reluctant to talk about current events kind of thing lately. I'm really hoping that calms down because I don't, I don't like the way things are right now in the world at all. You know... Some of the things that's been happening recently, I think, is just crazy. 
you know, like, what's up with Mr. Potato Head? You know, we'll talk about Mr. Potato Head for a second. At least my opinion on Mr. Potato Head. When I was a kid, I had a Mr. Potato Head. And then as I was a little bit of an older kid, they came out with Mrs. Potato Head. Well, here's my thing. What does this new change do to Mrs. Potato Head? Is Mrs. Potato Head now out of a job because Mr. Potato Head no longer has a gender identity? And therefore, is this just another way that women are now being um, ruled out? Because, you know, back... When I was younger, when they came out with Miss Potato Head, that was supposed to be so little girls who wanted um, to have a toy like them, you know, not just Mr., but, well, Mrs., um, or if boys wanted to play with a Mrs., I mean, you know, whatever, but that's what it was for, and now Mrs. Potato Head apparently is out of a job, so... Sorry if it makes me sound like a feminist, but I'm a little offended by that because that's gone. I mean, or what are they going to do? Are they just going to have a potato head and um, are they going to put like all of Mr. and Mrs. parts into the box and it just becomes a potato head? I mean, I don't know. I'm just a little... I'm a little confused and I'm a little offended and, you know, no, I'm not really offended. I take that back because that's the problem. That is the problem with America today. It's the United States of America, the land of the offended. Um, I don't know. I just think we all need to go back to how it was when, even if we were offended, we kept our mouth shut about it because, you know, I don't. There's lots of things in my life that I've encountered that I don't agree with, but I don't go around trying to start trouble over it either. So, there you have it. Here's my opinion on uh, the potato heads. It's just, it's, it's silly, right? I mean, I don't know. In my opinion, it's just silly. Okay, let me see. Where is my yellow? My yellow. Oh, I didn't even realize sunflower was a color. I guess I should have. That sunflower was one of the colors in Cali Art. But where is my yellow? <laughs> I see sunflower. I want yellow. I really don't see my yellow. Oh, now that I grabbed out sunflower, I found my yellow. There it is. All right, I'm going to do the gold. The areas that I would want to do gold with just the yellow. That seems to be one of the closest gold colors I've found. And then I'll probably add some accents with my um, dual hybrid metallic to add a little more to that. You know, to add some actual gold. And I'm going to tell you guys, I don't even know what's up with this Dr. Seuss stuff. I'm going to be honest because I can't even really speak on that much because I'm just going to be totally truthful with you guys. I had never heard of those Dr. Seuss books that they're talking about. So... 
Um, yeah, I don't even have an opinion on that. It makes me, here's the thing though. And this is what people don't realize when they get, I think what happens is people get offended by something and they make an issue out of it. You know, a big social issue gets made out of something. And even something like with me, I'm going to be honest, I don't even remember that book or the books that they pulled. But here's the thing. Now they're kind of in my head. And now, now I'm a little interested in going and finding these books because now it's kind of like, hmm, maybe I do want to read these books because maybe I want to see what all the hoopla is all about, you know, so... I don't know. I think that's where people make a mistake sometimes in messing with something that wasn't even, it wasn't even a thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, those Dr. Seuss books were the furthest thing from my mind until this week. And now I want to read it to see what the problem is, you know? But here's the whole thing. While we're all getting offended, and like I said, I'm not really offended. I actually think it's all kind of silly. But at what point do we stop? You know, at what point do we stop? And Santa Claus is coming to town from the 1960s, made by Bass, or something in Bass, um, you know, the little stop motion cartoons that Santa Claus Chris Kringle in that video sings to the children um, if you'll sit on my lap today a kiss a toy is the price you'll pay you know was that meant in the way it could be construed today no and I'm sure very much like those Dr. Seuss books. I haven't read them, so I can't say, you know, like I said, I kind of want to now, but it kind of makes me wonder if at the time those Dr. Seuss books were written, is it much like that cartoon where it wasn't that, it would have never been thought of the way it was brought over. Does that make sense to anybody? So it's kind of like at what point, at what point do we stop? You know, Frosty the Snowman is a snowman who walks around and dances with children with no pants on and smokes a pipe. Okay, there is a reason that Scooby-Doo and Shaggy eat Scooby Snacks. It's called the Munchies. Okay, um, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, most of the things if you wanted to, could be construed in all kinds of ways. And I'm not saying that's what they meant when they made Scooby-Doo, although I think it was a play on it. But, you know, I don't know. I could be wrong on that. It could be a situation of they could have just been some groovy people and they really are talking about dog snacks. But where I come from, I think Scrappy or Scrappy. I think Shaggy was partaking in some of them Scooby Snacks too, which makes me think they weren't dog food. But I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it gets so mixed up and so twisted and tangled up and I don't know, it's everything. And I guess back in October, and I didn't even realize this until today, I was reading an article that back in October... Disney Plus pulled Peter Pan, Aristocrats, and Dumbo off of watch list for anybody on Disney Plus with, you know, like parental control. In other words, a child's account that their parents had set up. They pulled those off of there because of insensitive or, I don't know, some kind of somethings. And um, put warnings on those cartoons warnings people on peter pan really on dumbo you know uh and if you look at the a bit i mean and i've heard this about like rudolph you know rudolph the red-nosed reindeer yes it was a story of a poor deer that was bullied and picked on 
But the point was, was he rose above all that and become something wonderful and great that couldn't be lived without um, kind of thing. And but people, yes, Santa did make remarks even. And I think it maybe people should have thought about that when they made it, because even Santa had made some remarks about Rudolph that weren't very kind in that, which makes it sound like even adults have a tendency to pick on kids also. But you know what? You know what? Let it go, people. <laughs> Just let it ride. Just let it ride. And my daughter who passed away, she was picked on relentlessly as a kid. Okay. Well, she died as a child too. So um, I say as a kid, but she would be 20, I believe. Yeah, 20 this year. But, um, you know, she was picked on and ridiculed and everything else. But the bottom line was, you know, the bottom line is, there's lessons in life and I'm not saying it's okay to bully because it's not. And I think the lesson like behind Rudolph was to show these people who are bullying and I'm sure it didn't work really. But at the same time, I think its intent was, was to show these people who are bullying that you need to look a little deeper because you may really need what these people have to offer. So I don't know. And I know I'm probably talking in circles at this point and I'm sorry, but it's just something that's just been weighing on me. So kind of really kind of heavily lately thinking about all this because I don't know. I just, I think it's, I think it's kind of ridiculous. That's what I think. And it's all kind of just getting on my nerves. Um, it seems like the whole world is looking for something to be angry about, something to complain about, something, I don't know, I don't know. The world today just really concerns me. And I like to think I'm a very free thinking person. Um, I'm not judgmental at all. I think I have a very open, open mind. And what I think you're seeing is people, you know, there's, there's always two sides to every coin and, you know, you have a group of people who they claim want to keep all these things around that hurt people. It hurts society. You know, they say all this, but you know, here's, here's what I see too. It's radicalism on both sides. I like to think I'm a very open-minded, non-judgmental, non-judgmental person. I do. I like to think that. Well, the people who are claiming to be open and non-judgmental are actually being very judgmental by saying, well, this stuff needs to be removed because of this, 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 this. It's just as radical on both sides. And I, I don't know how to really put that into words. Maybe some of you know what I'm trying to say. And if you think you know what I'm trying to say, by all means, leave it in the comments and, um, you know, put words in my mouth, but because apparently I can't find the right ones. But if you look, I think, I don't know, I guess it, I guess it always, you know what, I guess it comes down to this. Opinions are like. Well, you know, everybody's got one, I guess. I guess that's kind of what it comes down to. But I just hate to see the way it's going because everybody's just offended just all the time. It's always something. It's always somebody trying to keep something stirred up. And I can't. I can't help but think that's what a lot of this is about, is just division. 
you know, dividing people, um, the very people that say equality don't want equality, truly, because what they're doing is not equality. It's forcing something on someone. Um, and I'm not about that. I am about equality. Um, I want everybody to be treated the exact same. You know, I do. But it's not equality when you say, I'm going to take away from this person, group, whatever, and I'm going to give to this person, group, or ever, whatever, because this person, group, or whatever um, has been wronged or not considered or not counted or, you know, whatever. And you're going to use that. I mean, come on, guys. I want Mr. Potato Head. That's what this comes down to. It, it's a stinking childhood toy. You know what I'm saying? What are we going to do? Get rid of stinking Hot Wheels and Barbies? You know? Um, because it's no different. It's, it's really not. Mr. Potato Head is a stinking child's toy. Girls and boys both play with it. Barbies. I, okay, guys, y'all can sit out there and deny it all you want to, but I know there is guys out there who have sat down and they have played with some Barbie dolls and, you know, G.I. Joe, Joe dolls, whatever. Okay. It's dolls. All right. It's dolls. And then, and then you've got, you know, then, then you've got, um, Hot Wheel cars. Okay. Well, let's talk about them Hot Wheel cars for a minute. You know, when I was a little girl, I had a shoebox, big shoebox, full of Hot Wheel cars. You know, play with what you want to play with and leave the rest alone. It's that stinking simple people. It really, really, really is. It's just... What you guys are doing is ridiculous. <laughs> And I say you guys, but I'm just referring, you know, just throwing it out there general. I'm not pointing a finger at guys. You know, I don't need anybody to say, guess what Donna said about some guy. Uh uh, didn't say that. I said you guys, as in whoever it is that's walking around with this complex that <sighs> seeks some counseling or something. You know, I mean, I don't know. Jesus. It just. It's a toy. It's a toy. Oh, how about little, you know, what is it? Ready bake ovens. You know, what about that? What about that? What are you going to do about that? Um. You know, they say, they used to tell me in my generation growing up, you can be anything you want to be. No, you can't. You can't be, apparently, a child that wants to play with Mr. Potato Head. Not anymore. Why can't we just to each its own? You know, why, why can't, why? Because that's a quality. You know, equality really was Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, because guess what? If you wanted them to be gender fluid, um, all you had to do was ask mom and dad for Mr. Potato Head and Mrs. Potato Head and mix those pieces up. Don't think I didn't as a child. I had them both. And let me tell you, they were both in one box together with all their parts all meshed up. And I used whatever piece I wanted to use whenever I wanted to do it. Um, you know, yeah. So that's a quality that would be gender fluid, truly. And I mean, I, I'm assuming that's the problem. Is they're saying Mr. Potato Head is a gender issue? I, I, I don't know. If anybody thinks they can explain this Mr. Potato Head thing to me, please do. 
because I tell you what, the uprisings and stuff that we had in this country um, last year, um, about this time, make so much more sense to me than this whole Mr. Potato Head thing. I thought 2020 was crazy. Apparently, 2020 turned 21 and started drinking because this, this has been something. You know, this has been something. And you guys can tell yourself whatever you want to tell yourself. It's not equality. This is not equality. This is separation. This is um, not inclusion. It's disclusion. This is not. Um, this is not desegregation. This is segregation. Okay. It's what it is. Sorry. It's my opinion. Okay. I guess I should probably hop off my soapbox now. I'm sure I have ruffled the feathers. Okay. Oh, all right. That's a flower. I'm trying to make sure I don't color right over this flower box and just stay on the beam. Oh, goodness. We've went past an hour today. That's really good. I start out telling you guys I don't have anything to say. And then I found my soapbox. It's just, I'm sorry. I, you know, I could talk to you guys like this about my opinions and things um, all day long. But truly, censorship has become a problem. And I don't know what I can and can't really say anymore. And that scares me as an American. It really does. I never thought there would be a day that I'd be in a position where I had to go, well, can I say that? The truth is, I don't know anymore. I don't know. Don't know what can be said and what cannot be said. And, you know, it seems like, I, I don't know. This is my Cali Art Potato Brown, by the way. Speaking of potatoes. All right, let's see where we're at. I didn't mean to shake the camera. I am sorry. There we go. That's where we're currently at on the picture. I think it's turning out okay. I'm going to stop since we are past an hour. Um, like I said, there'll be some links for you guys down in the description. Please check that out. Support the channel in any way you can. Um, feel free to leave me a comment. Um, yeah. So um, I'll see you guys in my next video. But you know what? Until then, please be kind to yourself and please be kind to each other. Um, it's crazy times we're living in and we can make a difference. We will make a difference. Make it be a positive one. Until next time, guys, peace, love, and happy coloring. Bye, guys.